You know the blood still works. Clap your hands, all you people. Come on. Oh, I dare you. Let's have corporate church. Here we go, everybody. Let me hear those hand claps. Come on. Break it down, hand claps, come on. Come on, everybody. Everybody clap your hands. Come on. It will never, it will never. Come on, say it again. It will never. One more time. It will never. Right here, the blood, the blood still works. Put your hands together and give God praise. Come on, give him praise. And God has summoned you into the house of the Lord. Remain standing, please, as we are going to the word of the Lord. It is our custom to stand and honor God's word. God is going to do something special today. Something special. Let's see. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody say the promise of joy. And my focus today is going to be the fullness of joy. We want you to go to Psalm 16. Psalm 16. We're going to start with the seventh verse. Psalm 16. We're going to start with the seventh verse. Glory to God. How many ready for the word? Amen. I need the word and I esteem it above my necessary food. Yes. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Give me a word that brings forth life yes, and that more abundantly. If you get Psalm 16 and 7, say, I got it. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My reigns also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope for thou will not leave my soul in hell. Is there anybody here say, I don't want to be there. I don't want to go to hell now. Don't leave my soul in a tormenting place. Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. It is 11 that I want us to read together in, count, in concert. One, two, three. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. That was good reading, but I believe you can give me some better energy with that. If you don't have the Bible, you, it's on the screens. I want you to read it with some authority and conviction. One, two, three. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy and at thy right hand pleasures forevermore. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing and doing of his precious word. Once again, we're going to be talking about the fullness of joy. And ultimately, that's what God wants you to experience on a daily basis. The fullness, somebody say fullness of joy in me. Say it again. Fullness of joy 
in me. Let's pray. Spirit of the living God, we thank you for the multitude of your mercy and your grace. Thank you for this day, this time and season that you have brought us to. We know it's because of you that we live, we move, and have being. So, Father, we ask in Jesus' name that you will speak it to us in such a way that will birth forth transformation, that will birth forth encouragement and strength like no other. In the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, I want you to give God 15 seconds of crazy praise. Go. Come on. Oh, you can do better than that. Give him 15 seconds. That was nice, but let's give God a crazy praise. Go. Open your mouth. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So we are in the Advent season. Advent meaning that is coming or the arrival and it leads all the way to Christmas Day and we have been focusing on the promises of God and the promises of God are yes and in him amen if he's promised you something you can bet your last dollar it shall come to pass now it may not come when you want it but it will come and it will be on time and most better than what you prayed for somebody shout hallelujah so our first installment was hope and the necessity to keep hope alive and not allow anything you may be facing to destroy your hope because there will be distractions and there will be things the enemy sends your way to deter you and make it feel like that God is not going to answer and if he's not going to answer why have hope on last Sunday we focus on the promise of peace to the believer through the prince of peace and the authority that we have been given to decree peace we open our mouth death and life is in the power of the tongue and we open our mouth and decree peace you have the authority wonderful people of God to decree peace in the midst of a storm you can decree peace Jesus left us an example while he was asleep and the disciples were afraid I'm telling you they would they thought their lives was over Jesus didn't even rebuttal to them he said nothing but he spoke directly to the storm and said peace be still I don't know what's going on in your life but I want you to open up your mouth and decree and declare peace be still I want you to say it again because you did it because I asked you to but you know what's going on in your life somebody say peace be still right in the midst of the situation right in the midst of the circumstance and the dilemma for the third time somebody say peace be still and so ultimately in this Advent season we are decreeing and declaring the promise and as Christ was promised to come to the earth so will your promise come to you a Romans 15 and 13 says something that I want you to understand comprehend and even read when you get home it said may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope we serve a God of hope not a God of fear not a God of hatred not a God of distrust or discouragement we serve the God of hope and he wants us to abound Bound in hope Lord I like that word that he not just wants us to have it but he wants us to abound unto every good work in hope somebody say keep hope alive 
Did you not know that joy is rooted in who God is? Peace is rooted and who God is. Love is rooted and who God is and hope is rooted and who God is. Look at the type of God we serve. He wants us to be filled with all joy and all peace. Can you imagine that God, the creator of all things, he lives on the inside of us and he wants us to be filled with all joy and all peace. Not just in the sweet old by and by or when we get to heaven he wants us to be filled with all joy and all peace right now he wants us to be filled with all joy and all peace tomorrow next week next month and next year somebody say all joy all peace uh, this is the good news of the gospel this is the prosperity message check out what John says beloved I wish above all things that thou would prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers well what is soul prosperity I'm glad you asked it is all being it is being in harmony with God where your soul is in harmony with God. Uh, Jamari, give me C E G. Give me C E G. Good. C E G. See how that harmonizes? Now just smash it all down. God doesn't want you to live a life that's full of distortions. He wants harmony. C E G. He wants you to be in harmony with Him. Somebody show hallelujah. Somebody say, I want the gift of joy. Yeah, the Bible teaches us that joy is a gift from God. And that is something to be celebrated and shared with others. That joy is a gift. If you can't give monetary, physical gifts, at least give joy this year. Oh, I just said a whole lot. At least give a smile on your face. At least give hope to somebody that Jesus is alive and he is real. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fears are gone. My life is worth living just because he lives. So God wants us to be happy. Uh oh, let me say it again. God wants us to be happy Christians, not sad Christians and melancholy and walking around looking like you've been sucking on sour lemons. I'm in love with Jesus. Well, don't nobody know it. Can't nobody recognize it because the way you express Jesus, I'm ready to go so have some Jack. Daniels. That is not fullness of joy. Don't be looking at me funny because I brought up Brother Jack. Half of y'all know exactly who Jack is and Brother Paul Masson. Oh, uh oh, I'm getting in your business. Somebody say, Help me, Lord. But God wants us to be happy. Can you look at your neighbor for the first time and ask them, Are you happy? Are you a happy Christian? Now God don't want you feeling sorry for yourself. We should be the happiest people on earth. We should be expressing that happiness because we blessed. We are alive. How many just grateful I'm alive? I should have lost my mind. I should be dead and gone. It's almost the end of 2023 and millions didn't make it. But God expressed his mercy and and compassion and kiss me right on the forehead and said live somebody shall live I like the part of the word says you shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord that means if you woke up woke up this morning God still got something for you to do and he wants you to complete it somebody say complete it people should know that you are a Christian yeah by your joy 
by your love, by your peace. I'm going to say it again. They should be able to recognize that there is something about you that is different. I mean, there should be a radiance on your face. When you walk out the door, the Bible says, put on the Lord Jesus and make no provisions for the flesh. Sometimes you don't even feel like it. Some of us woke up this morning and didn't even feel good and then said, well, maybe I'll stay in the bed. But then you said, no, I'm going to get up. I'm going to put on the Lord Jesus. I'm not going to make provisions for the flesh because on tomorrow I'm going to be dealing with those knuckleheads at that job so I might as well get myself up somebody say get up go to church and have church is there anybody here that pressed your way this morning did you press your way I want you to put your hands together and give God praise just because you pressed your way there's a prominent theme all the way in the Bible, all the way from the Old Testament to the New Testament. There's a prominent theme of joy from the beginning to the end, from Genesis to Revelation. There's a prominent theme of joy and God's plan for mankind is that we would experience joy, that we would experience love, that we would experience peace. In the Old Old Testament the Israelites rejoiced and sang songs of joy because the enemies the Egyptians that was chasing them drowned in a Red Sea the Lord tapped me on the shoulder and said tell the people that are sitting in the audience and those that are listening by way of social media give them this word for me that whatever's chasing you is getting ready to be drowned Somebody should have gave God a crazy praise on that. Whatever has been coming after you, some of you all are afraid. Your past has been chasing you and knocking at the door and saying you can't do it. You're not going to make it. I remember when. I remember what you did. And it just keeps showing up on the record. But as Minister Charles let us know a couple of weeks ago, this is the season for your record to be expunged. This is the season. God says, I'm going to wipe out your past and I'm going to give you another chance. It's called grace. Grace is in the business of wiping out what you did. Oh, you did it. You know you did it. And everybody else know you did it. But God says it's by my grace that I'm going to wipe out your past. Oh, you need to give God praise because I feel that in my spirit that your past is going to be a sponsor. Your past is going to be left behind. I don't care if they bring it up. It makes no never mind. It's erased. For by grace I've been saved through faith. That not of myself. It is the gift of God. That's why I got joy unspeakable and full of glory. Because he don't remember my sins. He cast my sins as far as from the east as from the west. So you can bring it up all you want to. Makes no never mind. God forgot all about it. Look at your neighbor for the second time and say, God, forget all about it. You can bring it up if you want to. Makes no never mind to me. And yes, I did it. I'll give you the resume. I did more than the resume say. But God's blood covered. Uh-oh, I messed up the message right there. I said the blood covered. Look at the name and say, I did it. But the blood covered. messed up. I made a whole lot of mistakes, but the blood has not lost its power. The blood still works. Man, see, y'all gonna make me mess up the message and I'm trying to move on, but somebody say the blood still works. Salvation in the blood, deliverance in the blood, hope in the blood. The blood still works. Wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him, and by his stripes I am healed. Somebody say the blood still works. The blood still works. 
Yeah, yeah y'all sit down. Y'all sit down, y'all. Y'all making me a little happy. <sighs> making me a little excited. Somebody say the blood still works. So God wants us to be happy. Somebody say happy. I mean, God really wants you to be happy. God wants you to be happy. Y'all don't believe it. Let me come over here. God wants you to be happy in every area of your life. Happy when you're in the, in the store. Happy with your relationships. And in this season, if it's not making you happy, drop it. Now that was, that was worth coming to church for. If it's not making you happy, later, Gator, after a while, Crocodile, because I'm supposed to be experiencing the fullness of joy. I can't do that no more now. I'm crying all the time and feeling sorry for myself and depressed and ready to drink and having a Phyllis Hyman moment. The devil is a liar. Somebody say, God wants me to be happy. I can prove it. The Jeremiah 20, 11, 29, 11 says, the thoughts and plans I have towards you are of peace and not of evil. And for you to have a future and a hope. This is what prophet Jeremiah was telling us that God, he's not sitting there waiting for you to mess up. And as soon as you mess up, he going to strike you down. He wants you to be happy in every area of your life. I mean, we should be expressing such good. It don't mean you won't have a bad day. But somebody say, God wants me to be happy. And the Bible says, according to the book of, book of Proverbs, that the blessings of the Lord make rich and add no sorrow. So why are you crying? When God comes into your life, he comes in there to add, not subtract. He's coming to multiply, not to divide. Amen. So check it out, wonderful people. If you are having subtraction, you need to check out what's going on. Amen. Now, check it out. Be careful because there are seasons where God will come in your life and prune that's right. That's right. everything that's dead that don't belong. And it'll feel like loss to you. He said, but I'm pruning your tree so you can have more fruit. And some of you all are in a pruning season right now. And you're like, Lord, what's going on? This don't make no sense. I'm serving you with all I got. And it seems like I'm losing. God said, you're not losing nothing. I'm getting rid of those things that don't belong. And you insist on holding on to it. So I got to prune it and cut it out of your life. Oh, Lord. Somebody say, help me, Lord. So he comes into our life to, to do. The relationship is for you to be happy. And you cannot lose serving God. I'm going to say it again. You can't lose serving God. We have a God that wants us to have joy in all our circumstances. Yes, you're going to go through some things. Yes, stuff is going to happen. Folks are going to act crazy. But check out what I'm getting ready to say again. He wants you to have joy in all circumstances. Once again, joy is rooted in who God is. It is not fleeing or fleeting based off your circumstances. Joy remains. We have to learn how to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. Don't there go that word abounding. I'm going to abound in the midst of the circumstance, in the midst of my trouble. I'm going to still abound. I'm going to still have joy. Now, check it out. Paul gives us an antidote for sustaining joy. So your joy will remain. He says, this is what I want you to do according to 1 Thessalonians 5. He says, I want you to rejoice always. So check out the antidote. It's a secret, and I'm releasing Paul's secret for sustaining your joy. He said, I want you to rejoice always. He said to the Philippians, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. It is a mandate. It is a command. This is how you sustain your joy. Yeah. 
you begin to rejoice. You begin to lift up your hands. You worship the Lord. And it sustains your joy. You can't be looking around now and, and, and thinking about your issue and your problems. He said, I want you to get into the flow of rejoicing. You got to do this whether you feel like it or not. He said, rejoice always, not when you're just here. Sometimes you got to slip off when you're at work and go into the bathroom and just lift up your hands and begin to rejoice. Oh, I got a psalm for that. Psalm 34 said, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Then there's an invitation oh magnify the Lord with me let us exalt his name together for I saw the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears if you go down several verses it says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivers out of them all it makes no never mind what you are experiencing today Day. Many is what you're going to go through. But guess what? You're coming out of this. You're coming out of that. You're coming out of this. And guess what? You're going to come out of that. And he says, rejoice always in the midst of the circumstance. Can I give you some more antidote? Here's another secret. He said, pray without ceasing. That's 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. He said, pray without ceasing. Men should always pray and not faint. This is, this is going to sustain that joy while you are praying. Uh, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. See, you talking about the problem, but you're not praying. You're worrying about the issue, but you're not praying praying. You got on the phone with gossiping Judy and she got more problems than you. But God says you're not praying. If you can turn that into prayer, looking unto Jesus, looking unto him who is the author and the finisher of my faith. Oh, come on, Psalms 121. I will look to the hills from with cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. You're not going to get it out there because it'll be temporary but you want fullness somebody say help me Lord and I mean you got to say it this year going into this new year let that be your mantra where you are opening up your mouth not saying it in your thoughts decreeing and declaring that God is my help God is my strength God leads me and guides me somebody say Say, help me, Lord. And then 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18, he gives us more antidote. He said, in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God and Christ Jesus concerning you. Well, I had an issue with that verse. Have you ever read the Bible and say, I don't know about that verse right there. I ain't going to tell nobody about that verse right He said, in everything... I'm going to give thanks. You mean I can be sick in my body? I got a bad report. They told me it's not going to turn out the way I want. <laughs> and everything, give thanks. I'm going to say it again because I don't believe you got what I said. He said, in everything, give thanks. Thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. You didn't know you was going to go through that storm, but God knew. And he's strengthening you while you're walking. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to fear no evil. Why? Because he's with me. And I can give God thanksgiving because I know that everything is going to turn out all right. I don't wait till the battle that is over, but I shout right now. Oh, Lord, y'all don't want this today. Come on, let me give you some more word. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared 
with the glory that shall be revealed in us. I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared. That means glory is on a whole nother level and glory is getting ready to hit your house. So lift up your head, oh ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, oh ye gates, because glory is getting ready to hit your house. Look at your neighbor and say, glory's coming. Oh, you said that too lazy. Glory is getting ready to come. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down. Oh, somebody shout glory. I reckon that the sufferings of this present time not worthy to be compared with the glory. Everything the enemy sent out your way this year. It's not compared with the blessings that's about to hit your life. I mean, some of us been through some stuff this year and wondering if we was going to get out of it. God says, it, 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 you're going to forget all about it. It's going to be in the sea of forgiveness because I'm getting ready to bless your socks off for what I allowed you to go through. So when everything give thanks, for this is the will. Oh, I got something to tell you. You in the will. You in the will. You in the will. I know you think you out of the will, but you are in the will. And then the apostle James, he slips in and said, count it all joy. When you fall into divers tests, knowing that the trying of your faith is working patience. Another translation says it's working perseverance. In other words, it's building up something in you. And I told you last week, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I did not trust the sweetest frame, but I'm going to lean on Jesus' name. What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, I see a priest up here. Uh -oh. Y'all gonna stop. You, you trying to take me there, and I'm trying to stay in the flow. But somebody say, I'm leaning on Jesus. And what I've been through is not compared with the blessings uh, that's about to hit my life. Uh, so if you hating and you jealous, uh, you ain't seeing nothing yet. Because uh, you ain't seeing what God is about to do for me. Oh, God. <laughs> my circumstances is working something in me. My issues is working something in me. And then it says, let patience have a perfect work. That you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Job said it like this, though you slay me, yet will I trust you. Though you slay me, yet will I trust you. Go ahead and kill me, but on the third day, I'm getting right back up. I'm going to rise again. I want you to scream it in your neighbor's face and say, I'm going to rise again. I'm going to get back up. I'm going yeah, yeah. to I'm rise. I'm going to get back up right in your face. You can hate on me all you want to. Talk about me. Criticize me. I'm going to rise. Uh oh. Oh. I'm going to rise. I'm going to get back up because the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of me. I'm going to rise. I'm going to get back up, I promise you. I'm going to get back up. The naysayer, the gainsayer, I'm going to get back up. Set your trap, stab me in the back. Makes no never mind. I'm rising back. I'm getting back up, boo. I'm going to get back up. 
So Jesus, he's the source, source, the worldly, worldly possessions, accomplishments, even the people in our lives are blessings that make us happy. They are supposed to bring joy and hope into our life, encouragement to our life, because you already represent joy. So why are you bringing haterade in my life? When you met me, I was happy. Now I'm sad and upset and crying. No, boo, you got to go. I ain't got time for it. Not this time. Not this. I've been there, done that, got a t-shirt. But not this time. I'm not going down that road and you not dragging me to that pit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Bible teaches us, however, that Jesus is the source of all of our joy. Now, come on, Nehemiah. Come on in here, he says. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, I just said something. He gave us an antidote. Brother Nehemiah says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. How am I going to have joy? I'm going I'm to pull on strength. I'm going to pull on strength from the source, which is Jesus. And he is the fullness of all joy. So this year, this 24, I'm not being depressed. Because depression is a decision. I just said something. And I'm going to give you, as your pastor, I'm going to give you 24 hours to have a bad moment. That's all you got. You got 24 hours to feel sorry for yourself and lock yourself in the room. Just 24 hours. And then I want you to pull the shades back up and say, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm not even giving myself 24 hours because I may act a fool in 24 hours. Uh oh, is anybody like me? 24 hours is too much. I'm going to give myself two hours and 45 minutes. That's all I'm giving myself. 24 hours, I'm crazy. 24 hours, you don't even want JT to show up, and JT is not saved. Somebody say, help me, Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, well, we sang it earlier. He's the source of my strength and the strength of my life. I will lift up my hands in total praise. Total praise is fullness of joy. Have you ever experienced total praise? Because most of the time it's reserved praise. Because you don't want nobody to look at you funny. But not me. I come, that's why we set the church up the way it is. You, uh, you can scream, you can holler, you can roll. We have a Hannah's church. Yeah. Yeah. Hannah was waiting on her promise and Eli thought she was drunk. Yeah. See, I want you to, see, for, for, for mostly, I know my people. They got to be in an atmosphere with, that's like this. Because if they don't, and you're trying to make me Sister Mary Martha, I'm going back to the streets. I can't be Sister Mary Martha. I, I, can't, have a, I, I can't have that type of atmosphere. Because, see, I was out in the club, man. And when they said, uh, last call, I was still on the dance floor. And some of y'all, y'all was wallflowers. And I gave it all to the devil. How in God's name am I going to give the devil most of my life and give God my leftovers? And y'all got in here, y'all got all quiet and laid back. And, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And you went to the club. They heard you from the door to the other end of the door. Hey, girl, I'm here. Where's the, where am I getting my Long Island? You was getting ready at 10 o'clock with your cigarette in your hand and your wine in the other, and you was getting prepared for the party. How many of you all prepared for the party? See, you got to bring the fire with you. Uh-oh. I'm about to go somewhere. You got to bring the fire with you. 
When you've been in your prayer closet, nobody got to pump you up. You bring the fire with you. You walk in the door, party, 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 party. Hey, see, the old saints, they will walk in the door. Y'all know nothing about that. Y'all looking around, child, where I going to see what they singing today. But some of us walked in the door. I'm expecting a blessing. I'm expecting a miracle. Something going to happen up here. God, move by your power. Move by your might. God, let your anointing fill the temple. I'm looking for a black. Is there anybody in this room that's look? Say, I'm looking for a blessing. I'm looking for a miracle. Somebody say, I expect a miracle. That's the type of atmosphere we have at Restoration Life where we're expecting something from God. Are there any people in this room that's expecting something to happen? I can't afford to leave out of here the same. Something got to happen for me in this place. Somebody say, me. Wait, wait, wait. Then Proverbs 17, 22, I'm almost done. Check out, it says, a joyful heart is good medicine. But a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Oh, I'm giving you an antidote. Proverbs 17, 22 says, a joyful heart is good medicine. Now I've heard some medicine, but I don't know too many medicines that's good medicine. Because most medicines have a side effect. Y'all, any, any folks, all of them, they got a side effect. But the Bible says that a joyful heart is good medicine. Ooh! That means if I'm joyful in my heart, that's my medicine for my fear. That's the medicine for my anxiety. That's the medicine for my mind. That's the medicine for my body. See, some of y'all upset and sick in your body because you don't have a joyful heart. The Bible says a crushed spirit, your spirit is crushed and your bones are drying up. You singing songs of depression and discouragement. And the Bible says, if you want to have good medicine, you need joy in your heart. Boy, I just told y'all something and y'all looking at me. You need to write that down. Put it on the fridge there. Put it in your car. That a joyful heart is good medicine. Oh my goodness, that so blessed me. I've read it a thousand times, but it hit me this time. That if I keep my atmosphere and my mind focused on joyful things, it's good medicine. You got all that medicine in the cabinet. And none of it compares to the joy of Jesus. I mean, you got medicine for everything, for your head, for your eye, for your ear, for your lips, for your cheeks, for the throat, for the shoulder, for the chest. You got you got just medicine, medicine just because, your medicine just in case. You got all this medicine, and the Bible says that a joyful heart is good medicine. Somebody say, help me, Lord. This is going to be the medicine for every area of your life for 2024. Yes, God. Yes, God. A joyful, somebody say joyful heart. joyful heart. This is going to cause you, check it out what I'm about to say, to enjoy life. Yes. Enjoy relationships. Enjoy your atmosphere. Oh, I got one for you. Enjoy you. Because you enjoy everything else but you. Everything else. When the last time you kissed yourself and say you got it going on? You balling and shot calling. You somebody. You a chosen generation. You have said that to everybody but you. You got a relationship with everybody but yourself. Oh, I better say it again to this side, because that side, you got a relationship with everybody but you. And you want everybody to give you something that you should be giving yourself. 
Amen. When my wife showed up, I already had something to give because I had a relationship with me. Amen. When are you going to have a relationship with you? And stop making excuses for you. No wonder you're depressed and you're not happy. You don't have a relationship with yourself. Oh, God. Everything you do is for somebody else. Baby, bye. Take yourself out to dinner. And I may have a real good steak and loaded potatoes and some carrots on the side. I mean, do it for yourself. Get your bike out of the garage and go bike riding by yourself. Take yourself for a walk and tell yourself how good you are and the great things you can do. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, oh, you got it going on. I mean, go out, have fun, and enjoy life. This year, we are going to practice enjoying life. And if it's not a good relationship, peace, G. Later. I can't afford it. I'm getting older up in this mug. Now, come on now. Come on, I'm getting, is anybody with me? I'm getting older. Gray hairs are showing up. I'm getting off 55 years old. I'm getting older. I can't afford to be wasting time with people that don't want to go nowhere, that don't want to do anything, that don't have no life. They feeling sorry for themselves. I got things to do. Get away from me with all that stuff because in his presence is full. Uh-oh. So I got to go back to the text. And it says, in his presence. Uh -huh. Oh, that's where the joy comes from. Being in his presence. Oh, I get it. I'm supposed to be in the Lord's presence. And if I'm in his presence, see, that's why God won't want you to come to church because he don't want you to be in the presence. My wife said something today. The, yesterday, she said, the peace of God is here. Yeah. It's in our house. Uh-oh. Yeah. It's in our house. It should be in the bedroom. It should be in the bathroom. Because the presence of God lives on the inside of me. Do you shift the atmosphere when you show up? <laughs> What happens? Do folks get uncomfortable when you show up? See, because a real anointing will makes folks feel a little funny. There's something about you. I, I don't know what it is. And you got to be secure in yourself because you will think it's rejection and you don't even know it's the anointing that's on you. It's the anointing. Say, are you not rejected? No, no. You not rejected. You not rejected. It, it, that's not it. You just got the anointing. And the anointing of God brings peace to an atmosphere that's disturbed. I've seen it happen. Well, I have been preaching certain places and the atmosphere gets disturbed. The atmosphere. I'm like, why are they acting like this? What do I do? You ain't did nothing. It's what's on you. A real anointing will disturb the atmosphere. A real anointing will cause demons to start trembling. A real anointing will send a witch out the door. A real anointing will send a warlock, warlock uh, running down the street. When you have the real deal, people will start talking about you for no reason at all. And you just got to say, oh, no, they're not talking about me. It's who's on me. Because I put on Jesus. That's the reason why things have happened in your life. The devil is not happy about it because you carry the glory. Thus, the glory affect the atmosphere. I bet you it's affecting your job. You don't even understand what's going on. See, you don't have to say nothing. Just sit in the atmosphere. And then all of a sudden, folks start getting antsy because you got anointing on you. Somebody say, in his presence is fullness of joy fullness of joy check out John 16 24 I'm about to give you some more antidote until now you have asked nothing in my name ask and you will receive that your joy may be full Amen. Amen. 
Maybe that's the reason why your joy is not full. You're not asking for nothing. He said, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Well, I asked for something and it didn't happen. You asked too low. He said, I'm trying to pull you from low thinking. And I want you to start asking on another level. I want you to come up here because you're asking on another. You're asking down here. I want you to, you asking too low. I can't answer that. You answer asking according to what you've seen. I want you to ask me on another level. I'm challenging you. Why are you asking a trillionaire for a cup of coffee? What are you asking for? He said, ask that your joy will be filled. Are you ready? Yes. Are you going to ask him? Yes. Ask him. Ask him. Ask him. Ask him. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door will be open. He said, I want you to ask me. He said, I'm in the business of doing it. You mean I'm missing out on a better day because I won't ask? I'm missing, missing out on a better experience because I won't ask that your joy will be full. All right, let me go ahead and get out of here. Then he says, according to Psalms 100, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, make a joyful noise. I want to go to a quiet church where they don't, you know, we just, we need just to be quiet. That's not Bible. It says make a joyful noise. When Israel got the victory, the Bible says you can hear them for miles because they got the victory for a war. Maybe that's what's holding you back from receiving the victory. You've been walking around your Jericho wall, but you haven't shouted at it. And when you go ahead and shout, then something's gonna fall. But you just laying back, waiting for God to do, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Then it says, all ye lands, Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. For we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Oh, check it out. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise y'all don't want it enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise that's the reason why you ain't got nothing and nothing working out for you because you're not entering into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. Hallelujah. His mercy is everlasting. How many know God's been merciful to you? So how are you so quiet? You know he's been merciful. And his mercy endureth forever. Find two or three people and say God's mercy endureth forever. Uh-oh, y'all don't want this today. Find another two or three and say his mercy endureth forever. I got a good
go back when it says make a joyful noise. Not just any kind of noise, but a joyful noise unto God. Serve the Lord with gladness. That means everything about you should exemplify an instrument of praise. Did you not know that God created you to be an instrument of worship, an instrument of praise? But what you didn't know is that Lucifer, he being the minister of music for heaven, decided he was going to give you another future. He made you an instrument of depression, an instrument of low self-esteem, an instrument of feeling sorry for yourself, an instrument of violence, an instrument of abuse, an instrument of rape, an instrument of molestation, an instrument of deceit, an instrument of manipulation, but God said on oh, today the curse has been broken I will bless him from the fruit of my lips with praise and adoration make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands all ye lands it means all ye people all ye people all ye people, not just a few of y'all, everybody, open your mouth with a Shabbat praise in the house. <laughs>